year ago, I created a video analyzing a piece of propaganda made by the Discovery Institute called Scientific Descent from Darwin. Uh, this document basically um, was aimed at creating the dishonest impression that there were scientists who didn't believe in evolution and that it was somehow still up for debate in the scientific community. To accomplish this, they tricked several scientists into signing it and produced and paid for um, this ad to be placed in major newspapers across the U.S. Um, so in my analysis of the, the the original list, which can be found here, I found that out of the hundred or so signees, virtually none of them were biologists or had any biological training whatsoever. And of those who did, most of them were tricked into signing it and had no rejection or problems with evolution whatsoever. Um, in fact, many of them were angry that they had been placed on it and had been re requ or, and had requested to be removed. And well, now here we are a year later, and we could see exactly how good and honest the Discovery Institute. Keep in mind the group claiming morality um, has been at or has been at fulfilling those requests. Now bear in mind that, that this analysis is due on their current list, which has has grown to several hundred people. Um, the trend still continues. The vast majority of them have absolutely no bi biological training. Out of the hundreds of them, there is only one paleontologist, and he's from Turkey and doesn't respond to emails. So specifically. Um, Dr. Silk, Minich, Milner, William Harris, and Carl Koval all expressed that they do not reject evolution, um, but they didn't, in their emails to me, in all fairness, specifically indicate that they wish to be removed. They are all still on the list, which, you know, is, is fair enough. It's dishonest, but and they, and they don't reject evolution, but they didn't specifically ask to be removed, to my knowledge, at least. Unfortunately, there are many biologists who I did contact who are still on the list and specifically requested to be removed. Dr. Siegfried Scherer responded, Dear Dr. Gray, in the meantime, um, I've asked to omit them, or I've asked them to omit my name from the list. Keep in mind this was about a year ago. While I'm still skeptical about whether or not neutral evolution can account for the massive increase in complexity, I definitely don't support um, the political ID agenda, nor do I support the efforts to get ID or creationism in the science curricula of state schools. I'm curious about the date that you found my name on the list. Was this recently or longer ago? Sincerely, Siegfried Scherer. Um, with him is Daniel Quebler, who's still on the list despite, despite responding, Whitney, I don't reject common ancestry, nor do I reject evolution. Skeptical is putting it a bit strong in my case, as it makes it sound like I'm a biological, intelligent design advocate, which I'm not. I hope that helps. Dr. Marvin J. Fritzler was quoted as saying that it is very unfortunate how the list is being construed into representing its signees as believing that every species on Earth was created in its present form. He again is still on the list. Dr. Martin Poini and I had a lengthier conversation and he again requested to be removed from the list and was not. Uh, the relevant part was basically that I wrote him asking whether or not he was um, skeptical of evolution and if he rejected common descent and he said um, I, I don't think that that's a, an accurate representation of my statement and my views. I do not reject common descent or evolution. The only question, as I understood it, was whether or not it can all be attributed to Darwinism, which it cannot. There are non-Darwinian mechanisms by which things can change, such as genome duplication hypothesis, first preserved by Ono, etc. After I saw how it was being used, I asked that my name be removed from the list. I don't know if it was honored or not. Here we are, 2009. His name is still on the list. So as you can see, the new updated list is basically more of the same. The, the vast majority of the people on it are still not biologists, and those who are still likely don't, re don't reject evolution. Basically, all of the ones that I found from my original video, which were the, on the, the same 100 list, or the list of 100 members, rather, um, they didn't reject evolution. They are still on there, even those who specifically requested that they be removed. Um, the Discovery Institute did not honor any of their requests, and they're all still on there. But it kind of makes you stop and wonder for a minute. Exactly why do people still believe that this is an issue? Like, like there's some sort of debate in the scientific community about whether or not evolution happens. Why do so many people believe that? And then I kind of also got to thinking, this is actually a fairly common trend among, among people who deny science. And that is to say, take a look at global warming. There are a vast, the vast majority of people don't believe that this, there is a scientific consensus about it, or they believe that the science is still under debate for some reason. And the reason for that is because, well, that's what they've been told. And a survey linked um, here in the video description found that, that many more people accept, a, accept global warming than do believe that the scientific community is united about it. And again, this supports what I'm saying, that they believe this because that's what they've been told. So. Who was telling them this, and where did this notion to tell people and, and, and to, to basically go against science by creating the illusion of a divided scientific community come from in the first place? 
Well, one such organization that's responsible for telling people this is the George C. Marshall Institute. And to understand exactly why they're doing it and what they're doing, it's important to understand where they came from and who the key players are. The George C. Marshall Institute was founded by Frederick Seitz, Nuremberg, and Jastrow um, to defend Reagan's strategic defense initiative by basically demonstrating that not all physicists felt the same. Even though the, perf even though the, the percentage and the proportions of physicists feeling that way are roughly the same as those who um, deny global warming and evolution nowadays. In 1978, Seitz worked for R.J. Reynolds Tobacco as head of a research department whose stated goal was to confound the link between smoking and lung cancer. That is to say, they had no interest whatsoever in, in proving that smoking didn't cause cancer. They merely wanted to produce enough doubt so that in the court of law, no case brought against them could win. Again, does this sound familiar? So fast forward to 1994. Um, um, Fred Singer worked with Frederick Seitz and in 1994 challenged secondhand smoke, basically saying that it had no adverse health effects and that he had peer-reviewed scientific research to back him. Unfortunately, that peer-reviewed scientific research was conducted by him, and the peer review panel that he's talking about consisted of over half of them were economists, and he didn't have a single professor of medicine or epidemiology. In 1995, he testified before Congress that there is no scientific consensus that CFCs cause holes in the ozone layer. Ironically, less than a month later, uh, the Nobel Prize was awarded to a team for demonstrating exactly that link. So once again, does any of this sound familiar? It's the same method that creationists use. So from tobacco to global warming, it's the same exact strategy because it's the same exact people who are doing it and who basically started the movement. Creationists basically caught on and realized that they could go against science by creating this dishonest impression of a divided scientific community. And that basically has become the, the modus operandi for any um, anti-science organization who, for whatever motivation, wants to go against science. And the creationists use it very well as this... Um, dishonest Discovery Institute document clearly shows. Thank you very much for your time.